So an area in which nanotechnology has, uh, has an impact on my field is an area that's called optical mapping or DNA barcoding, and it's a nice intersection of the nanophotics and polymer physics. So in this method, you take large DNA molecules and you insert sequence-specific probes into them. And now you have a, essentially a ball of spaghetti that has a bunch of bright dots on it. And if you can stretch out that ball of spaghetti and read off the distance between the dots, you can get information about where those probes are inserted into the DNA. And this gives you genomic information. It's complementary to sequencing. It's nice to think of sequencing as being the map of all of the streets and the genome mapping something like your map of the cities. And it can be quite helpful to know, for example, if New York and Los Angeles have switched places. And so the stretching of that DNA is a challenge. People recognize that using channels that are on the order of about 50 nanometers in cross-section, but centimeters in length up to that. But those can be used to stretch the DNA because the bending length scale for the DNA is about 50 nanometers. And so this has had a, a big impact on the field. It gives you more reproducible measurements and higher throughput. And it's now reached the point at which the techniques are being commercialized. Uh, going forward, I, I think this is a very promising area of nanotechnology applied to, to biology. This is a unique problem that can only be addressed by uh, nanofluidic methods. Uh, there's a lot of open questions that remain to be explored. Mm -hmm.